Hey you guys, this is Jeremy Taylor with In The Daw. Welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Leapwing Audio's Dyn1 version two. This is a really cool, really powerful multiband compressor that can do both normal multiband compression and parallel multiband compression. This is actually something that you've heard in about three or four of my past videos. I've started using this as my go-to multiband compressor for all voiceover work in every video for a couple of weeks now, actually. And so far, I'm really liking it. So with that said, let's just jump into the session and see how it sounds on some female vocals. Hey, you guys, welcome back. And as you see right here, we have the Leapwing Audio Dyne 1 plugin in front of us. This is a really cool, really powerful plugin that I'm just gonna say right now, I highly recommend you checking this out, at least grabbing a demo. This is a very, very powerful, very, very good sounding multiband compressor that also is a parallel multiband compressor, which is pretty interesting because you don't really see many multiband compressors that also have the ability to be parallel. And what that means is it basically allows you to turn these sliders into parallel injection sliders, meaning if you're in parallel mode and you have them all the way down, they're not actually doing anything. The signal source is the same, but then you can use the threshold and ratio controls to have a little bit of compression and then bring that compressed signal in in parallel into every individual band. Now you'll notice that I'm using the link control just to show you what I'm talking about, but if you turn that off, you can obviously control each individual band. Now besides that, you also have the ability to use this as a normal multi-band compressor. And that's actually what I like to use this for. All you have to do is go into your global controls and you can turn off the parallel compression mode. Now, while we're here, we might as well go over some of the other functions inside of this section. We have the ability to obviously turn on and off parallel compression. We have channel link modes, which allows it to be multi-mono or stereo, which is great if you have this on a stereo track or your master bus. And then you have your detection section. This allows you to choose between RMS and peak and anywhere in between. After that, we have the weighting, which is basically telling it how is each individual band going to be listening to the audio? Is it going to be weighted more towards each individual band? or is it gonna be weighted towards all of the bands? This is really cool because this allows you to get a more uniform sound by adding just a little bit of the weighting towards all bands, but you can still get a lot of control by focusing on these single bands. For my use, I tend to keep this at about 40%, just because I kinda of like that there. Now, as far as the bands, you are not able to change the crossover. You don't really need to change the crossovers because they're placed in a very, very musical way. And as you see, you have a total of five bands, Low frequency, low mid frequency, mid frequency, high mid frequency, and high frequency. You have a total of five bands. Now, you'll also notice that each individual band has their threshold ratio attack and release control, but you're also gonna see the secondary little section for the attack and release. This is basically the variable attack and release. It's gonna vary and fit itself in between there to have the best possible sound. This is going to allow you to have a very transparent sound while doing a ton of gain reduction. Now, the last thing from this little menu down here is the ability to control your crossover filters and your band auto gain. For this case, I'm gonna turn off auto gain because I like to compensate my gain using my master fader, and I'm gonna keep this at low latency mode. In ultra quality mode, this thing is extremely transparent and basically just sounds perfect. But low latency mode uses a little bit less CPU and has much less latency, and to be honest, I can't really hear much of a difference between the crossovers. So that just speaks to how well Leapwing Audio has designed them. Now, what we're gonna be listening to today is a female vocalist that I recorded here in my studio, I believe about a week ago. And this is a track that we're working on. And I'm gonna play this for you without Dyne 1. So I'm gonna bypass all instances and only use the initial channel strip that I had. So you can hear how this sounds in the mix without any processing besides the initial channel strip. Now, this sounds really good, and this is probably because we use a very nice microphone, but I'm noticing it has a little bit of a wooliness to it. Her voice had a lot more low end and a lot more low mid frequencies than I expected, and the microphone that I chose didn't really pick up the high end frequencies as much as I would like. Let's take a listen to it really quickly in solo. Close my eyes, I swear I see your ghost. It's like you're much too close to light. 
Now, with all of the time-based effects, it sounds pretty good, but if I bypass the time-based effects, you're really going to start to hear the unwanted buildup in the lower mid-frequencies. Close my eyes, I swear I see a ghost, it's like... It has a nice intimate sound, but it also has a little bit too much willingness to it. So I'm going to show you how we're going to control this using Dyne 1. And for this first example, I'm going to be doing this as a normal multiband compressor. And then I'm going to be showing you how I actually used it in an instance as a parallel compressor. So first, we'll start off with multiband. Now, the first thing I like to do when I'm using a multiband compressor is find the frequencies that I think have problems. And in this case, I know it's going to be this lower mid frequency, the high mid frequency, and the high frequency. So let's just focus in on those first. I'm going to highlight this band. And I'm going to up the ratio a little bit and just start doing some compression so I can hear how it sounds. Close my eyes, I swear I see a ghost. It's like you're much too close to life. Better to keep you buried inside the coffin than I. Now, right there actually sounds really good. I'm going to actually bring down the ratio and let's see how it sounds now. Close my eyes, I swear I see. That sounds pretty good. Let's bypass it. Close my eyes, I swear. You kind of don't hear that buildup of the lower mid frequencies anymore, especially where she says, close my eyes. Close my eyes. And with it on. Close my eyes, I swear. Much more controlled. Now, because it's controlled, I can actually bring up the gain on that frequency band just a little bit to add some of that intimacy back. Next, I want to control the low mid frequencies. And I actually don't tend to change the attack and release times very often just because they sound really good as they are. But in this case, I'm going to speed this up a tiny bit just so I can have a little bit more of a, a grabby sound. So let's dial in the low frequency. Close my eyes, I swear I see a ghost. It's like you're much too close to life. Better to keep... So now that we have about 6 dBs of gain reduction, I'm going to bring down the ratio. Close my eyes, I swear I see a ghost, it's like you're much... Nice. Now I can bring this up by about a dB. And now we're going to go to the high mid-frequency band because I don't really feel the mid-frequencies are the problem. So for this one, again, increase the ratio and let's dial in the threshold. Close my eyes, I swear I see a ghost, it's like you're much too close to life. Notice that we kind of get rid of some of the sibilance, but we also get rid of a lot of the air. So I'm going to back off on the threshold. Close my eyes, I swear. And now that I'm getting about 12 decibels of gain reduction, I'm going to bring down the ratio quite a bit to get a very, very subtle amount of compression. Close my eyes, I swear I see you go. Notice that this is way too low though, so this is where we can actually bring this up and increase the attack and keep it relatively wide so it has a nice amount of room to breathe while also maintaining a lot of control. Close my eyes, I swear I see. Right around there sounds pretty good. Bring down the ratio one more time and we can bring up the gain. Close my eyes, I swear I see. Next, I want to control the high frequencies and this is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to make this really fast. And I'm going to just dial in how much gain reduction I want. Close my eyes, I swear I see a ghost, it's like... you notice that I'm basically using this as a very, very heavy-handed de -esser. And again, I'm going to bring down my ratio so I can get a little bit less gain reduction, but keep that threshold. Close my eyes, I swear... And now that I have a nice amount of control over the S's, I can bring this up by a couple of dB. Close my eyes, I swear I see a ghost... And let's bypass it. Close my eyes, I swear I see. Let's turn it on and let's bring up the gain. Close my eyes, I swear I see a ghost. It's like you're much too close. So that sounds pretty good. Let's bypass it and listen to the low end, especially. It gets a little bit less controlled with it off. Close my eyes, I swear I see. And then turn it on. Close my eyes, I swear. It sounds a lot more even and a lot more uniform. And that's just really easy to do. I literally just grabbed it, turned a few sliders, and brought up the gain on a couple of these. Now, next what I want to do is I want to show you what I like to do when I have parallel compression engaged. This is a little bit more heavy-handed because 
we don't actually have to worry about dialing it in so it doesn't sound too compressed because the sliders actually are the gain for the compressed signal. So let me show you what this sounds like without any processing once again. Close my eyes, I swear I... You hear that wooliness, and now let's turn it on. Close my eyes, I swear I see your ghost, it's like... The parallel compression allows me to have a lot more aggressive compression, and bringing it back in allows me to get a very, very upfront sound without sounding bad. Let me show you what this sounds like with it on. Close my eyes, I swear I see your ghost, it's like you're much too close. Bypass it. Close my eyes, I swear I see... That's night and day. Suddenly the vocal just sounds dead, it doesn't have any life, and with the time-based effects especially, it sounds really good in parallel compression mode. Close my eyes, I swear I see you close to like you're much too close to life. And now let's combine it with the normal multiband compression that we used. Close my eyes, I swear I see you close to like you're much too close to life. Better to keep you buried inside the coffin than not. Okay. That sounds really good. I actually didn't intend to have both of these on, but I really like the way that this sounds. Let's solo it up real quick. Close my eyes, I swear I see your ghost. It's like you're much too close. And bypass them. Close my eyes, I swear I see your ghost. It's like you're much. It has a lot less control, and it just doesn't have the same smoothed out spectral balance that I needed. Overall, I'm extremely impressed with this plugin, and I'm just going to say it right now. This is definitely a mastering grade multiband compressor and multiband parallel compressor. And I highly recommend this. I know that Leapwing Audio is constantly listening to their users. Uh, that's why they added the uh, feature of having low latency mode and stuff like that. So this is definitely a company that I highly recommend at least keeping an eye out on because I can't wait for them to come out with a really cool dynamic EQ mixed with uh, some parallel compression and something else. I mean, I'm sure they're going to do something crazy in the future. Anyway, with that said, that's going to be it for this video. I will see you guys in a few seconds. All right, you guys. So that was Leapwing Audio's Dyne 1 version 2. The reason why I'm saying version 2 is because when they added version 2, they added a very, very efficient mode where it uses less CPU and less latency. And because of that, I've noticed that this is definitely something you can use in your mixing arsenal. If you're like me and you actually use a mixing console, a digital mixing console, uh, you can actually have your buffer size set pretty big and record your artist using just the console's effects and then mix it down and send them back those tracks. It's a really cool, really powerful plugin. I really like this and stay tuned because we plan on doing some other stuff using this plugin because there's so much this is good at. So. With that said, that's going to be it for this video. I highly, highly recommend grabbing a demo. This is Jeremy Taylor within the DAW, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.